nobody stop me now. Hey, hey, it's your girl Nate. What's good, everybody? This your boy Just Fresh. And welcome to the Inner Mind. Yeah. You already know. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about masculine vulnerability. I'm not vulnerable. I'm too gangster for all that. Yeah, we got, we're going to help him. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to help him learn his emotions, you know, because y'all... <laughs> Y'all act like y'all ain't got no emotions. See me, I'll, t I'll talk about it. My emotions. I've, 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 I've grown. I'm, yes. I've changed. I used to Come be one on, of the people I would growth. keep things in and wouldn't say anything. And then I realized that people just looking at me like I'm crazy when I act right. out or do certain things. So we're going to dive into that topic right, a little we're bit. we going to get into that, get into that. But um, what triggered this this episode was when you told me about the Insecure episode, the, right? The season finale <laughs> season of finale. Insecure, uh, Ghost Like. If right. you haven't watched that episode, I would say check it out. Yes. You really... I can just summarize the whole season for you because Wait, it was, but don't spoil it though. Well, look, spoiler alerts before you go along. Really? It's it going to be some spoiler alerts within this episode for Insecure. Yeah. So one of the thing was is that we were going to talk about something else, and then I text her because I was watching the episode, mm -hmm. and as many of you who do watch Insecure know, she had met this guy named Nathan from the age though. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Nathan, she like they they hit it off instantly. The chemistry was crazy. They they like she said Nathan made her feel like less than a fuck up. So it was like her, her energy and everything around him was just so different because of where she had been throughout the entire season, where she was just kind of down in the dumps mm -hmm. at the end of last season, and then this season she's trying to find her way, and she she doesn't like her job, and all these different things are happening. So Nathan comes back. Yes. And after he disappeared for like three episodes almost, he yeah. was like pretty much gone. And she was like stalking him, his Instagram page. They went to his friend's house. She was trying to hack his computer, all kind of stuff. Cause she was trying to figure out where's this guy right, that right, made right. me feel so great. Where did he go? He just disappeared. He ain't texting me back. He ain't called me, no nothing. Right. And she was like literally losing her mind the previous episode looking for this dude. Real stalker like that. Yeah. So she shows back up. I mean, no, he, he, show, shows, he back shows back up. Right. And he was like pouring his he, heart. Well, no, no. Before he poured his heart out, he showed up to the house, and Molly right, was there. Remember, yeah, Molly, yeah. Molly sent him with his, with his, you know, yeah, his did. orders, like, "Hey, go on, on get up out of here." Right. And then at the back. like towards like the end of the episode, Molly's like, "Yeah, you know, I'm, I I do want to make sure you had a good birthday, all this stuff. I even, you know, sent such and such away." She was like, "Wait, what?" And she was like, "Yeah, I sent Nathan away. He showed up trying to come over here with his little weak flowers and all that." No, we and, and I'm well. thinking that I didn't expect for. Issa to get mad but Issa got mad at Molly because Issa was like I wanted to talk to him like even though right. I'm mad at him mm -hmm. he disappeared on me and all this stuff I wanted to talk to him right so Nathan comes and he pops like up in the next scene the end of the yeah, he shows up into the scene right. in her apartment and they're kind of like they don't even walk into her apartment they're standing like at this post in her apartments and he's Telling her basically what he did and why he went away, basically explaining to her that sometimes he gets in a real negative mood. And when he gets in a real negative mood, when he gets to that zone of where he's at, he doesn't really want to talk to anybody. He shuts off from everybody and he just kind of runs away. And he's explained that to her. And her response to him was, so you ghosted on me because you got a bad attitude. Right. Which I thought was really insensitive, right? And I was like, damn, let me text Andronique. I was like, because this would be really good to talk about. Right. So my thing was when I hit Andrew I was like, a lot of times, this is not even just men, but a lot of times with men and why they don't express things is because people will take things and be like, oh, you acting like a B or you, you know, or whatever. Or, this, or, or what her response to him was, you got a bad attitude and you went away. It's a lot deeper than just having a bad attitude. Right. Understanding and dealing with somebody who kind of shuts down when they're upset. Mm -hmm is very imperative yes and so like when i was watching the end of that episode the feminist in me was like oh like i was cringing because i was like yay kudos to nathan for opening up but then when Issa responded i'm like oh oh girl i can't believe you responded like that like oh my god now let me ask this question What's the, up? you hadn't watched it until uh you hadn't watched that episode until after i told you yeah do you feel like I so kind of kind of like looking. Yeah, you're already yeah. looking for it, so you feel like I kind of set you up. For like, like, like look, look how she did my boy. Like, he from yeah. the age you can't do people from Houston like that. You yeah. feel me? Come on, Instagram. <laughs> I, I room 
for you. Come on, we room for everything to eat for me. Come on, girl. So <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was kind of like really telling to me in a sense of I know she likes him and I know she was upset, but the whole aspect of like you say masculine vulnerability right. is one of those things, probably one of the reasons why men kind of shut down or don't say anything because you know women will always say oh, we we put up with so much and we don't say nothing we do all this stuff and we don't mm-hmm. say nothing mm-hmm. but i'm always a big proponent of men go through stuff too we Absolutely. go through stuff we don't say things we kind of deal with stuff and we'll be like we ain't gonna say nothing because it's like mm-hmm. as a man if you complain people look at you like you a punk or you a b or you yes. whatever like you because you have a complaint about something like we right. don't this stuff we don't like too right. and we should be able to express that but a lot of times we can't express how we feel yeah so um i think that idea of masculine vulnerability first of all when you hear of it it's like that's an oxymoron like mm-hmm. masculine and vulnerability how do they relate but the the um thing is i feel like the idea of uh, masculinity when we think of it what do we think about uh alpha male powerful strong aggression you know all of these things mm-hmm. and when you think of vulnerability you think of like what the complete soft opposite like like you yeah, like uh when i was going through marriage counseling they were saying a woman is a vase she's mm-hmm. fragile you got to handle her mm-hmm. with care so when i think vulnerable i think a vase i think something that can easily be hurt i'm not thinking like it's one of those things of where i need to open up right so. right right and so with um masculine vulnerability what we have to understand is that like you said it opens up and it normalizes men to honestly just be comfortable in their feelings to get away from these uh social expectations that a man is supposed to be strong a man is supposed to be tough and all of these things and a man is not supposed to showcase his emotions okay i remember um way back in elementary mama had this book uh men cry in the dark Mm -hmm. and i remember that title so vividly because when i read it i was like huh Men actually cry, like I, like you know, I really thought because society p- pushes this narrative that men are not supposed to cry. If you cry, you're what? You're weak. You're a punk. You know all of these things, or they associate. Okay, if a man is crying, they're gonna, you know, have some ideas about his sexuality, right? You had like a light bulb moment. You know what's interesting that you say about that because you say when you refer back to as you were a kid, mm-hmm. and for me. I don't remember ever crying, like, as far as, outside of getting a whooping as a kid. And as, as a young man, as a teenager, I don't remember crying. I remember crying once, and it was about my dad. It was a terrible time. But, um, and it's a normal reaction. you know, growing up as a young man, we didn't watch a lot of dramatic movies. We watched a lot of action, a lot of kung fu, a lot of, like, like stuff that didn't require you to be emotional. So after I got married, I noticed that your sister has made me exceedingly emotional now because I watch a lot of the stuff that she watches. Mm -hmm. So watching stuff like This Is Us is like, if you can watch that show and not cry, I feel like something may be wrong with you. (laughs) Because that show, like, I, I feel like I'm tough. I feel like I'm pretty macho, carry a little bravado around. But that show really would take you on an emotional roller coaster. Like, don't binge that show because you're going to need therapy if you binge watch well, that show. I haven't watched it. It's so tough. It's it's, it. it's one of those, yeah, it's one of those yeah. lots of people you're going to watch it, get your little Kleenex, you know, and probably, you know, take your little something to keep it, you know, your mood up because it's definitely going to take you there. But right. now, that, you know, think about that. It made me think about the fact that I didn't watch a lot of dramas growing up. So it's like, mm-hmm. that could play into it too. A lot of the things that we take in as young men yes. aren't built to like for us to express our emotions. It's all like, mm, I'm tough, 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 tough. I can punch, I can fight, right. I can shoot a gun, I can jump over stuff. Mm-hmm. But it ain't no like, like, I don't know any dudes that watched The Notebook when they were younger. Because the thing is like the media pushes for if you're a man, you have to be involved in these masculine um, themes. True. Sports, football, you know, what do you think of men? Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, action action movies, what do you think of men? Superhero men. So it's like all of these things go back to what society tells you. True. You as a man that you're supposed to be involved with. Because Superman ain't never cried. Right. So. But I don't know, has he? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't remember him ever crying. And I don't watch this stuff, and that kind of goes back to, like I said, superhero. I'm a woman. Uh, I'm not interested in sports. I'm a woman, not interested. Well, it's, and it's because like, a lot of it is tailored towards being around men in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't think a lot of people understand is when they do cast women as superheroes, why they're such a big deal is because 
this is it's still like yeah it's still a small thing within society it's like we guys know we gonna get our male superheroes mm-hmm. so like this whole thing with Wonder Woman coming out was that I think it was last year everybody was hyped because it was such uh, a new thing to have like this yeah. female lead mm-hmm. superhero nostalgia type thing yeah then you have Captain Marvel getting ready to come out which is going to be basically Marvel's first run with the female superhero and people are like excited Mm -hmm. and it's like one of those things like when I went to go see Black Panther this year it was like that was our first that's our first black superhero that's like popular and it was like they have to get it right I just remember thinking the whole time they have to get this movie right Mm -hmm. because it's not just a thing of of representation but it sets the it sets the precedent for everything to come after it so it's the same thing with like men when it comes to like action movies or to our vulnerability it's like we don't have we didn't have anything that kind of set the tone for oh you can express your emotions you can talk about your feelings you can talk about what you're going through Mm -hmm. but a lot of times we just sit and we compartmentalize that information yes. and we just kind of like we just blow up that's why like a lot of dudes sometimes mm-hmm. when be like oh y'all yelling or whatever this and that it's because we've probably been mad for like three years yeah. we just ain't said nothing and yeah. then we get to talking and we like we're like especially like if me and my wife are arguing uh-huh. I'm I'll bring up a bunch of stuff that I ain't said nothing about mm-hmm. just because I'm mad that she's mad at me yeah. and I'm just like well what about this 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 and that and this is like I, I just I blow up yeah and so but that's interesting because what you see a lot of times like in the movies and media, um, it's more normalized for a man to um, express his, express his emotions uh, through like anger and aggression versus through crying. Okay. So it's like if I see a movie and I see a man like get really upset, like I don't flinch, nothing wrong. But when I say, um, see a man crying in the movie, I'm like, oh my God. Like, it's, it's so yeah. weird. And like I said, that's this, like, social construct of a man has to be tough. A man doesn't show emotion. But that's so damaging because men are human. Mm-hmm. Men have emotions. Uh, research shows that there are six basic emotions that humans feel universal. Meaning, if I were to go to China or France... You know, feelings of, like, happy and sadness, those are all feelings that we all feel, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So, why is it not okay for you to express that, but it's okay for me? Being a man, we can express happiness. I think it comes down to... But not sadness. But not sadness. And I think sadness... Like, the only time men really... Uh, is, is, you know, a friend of mine recently passed, and, we, you know, the funeral was this past Saturday. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing men cry... Even though I cry, it's still this thing of like, I don't know, they're hurting. Yeah. Like, it's like when, because it's like, it takes a lot for a man to cry. Mm-hmm. And so if you see a man crying. It shouldn't take a and, lot. And, and that's the thing is just that these like dire things that cause men to show mm-hmm. emotion or become upset. Because we do show emotion, but we don't show emotion in terms of what is meant as weakness. So crying to a lot of people is meant as weakness. Yeah. We show emotion when it comes to like, Oh, we want to fight. We ready to fight. Right, that aggression. Yeah, so it's like, like oh, yeah, it's like, oh, okay, I can show you that emotion then, or I can show you that emotion when I'm playing the video game right. and I'm down two with, with 15 seconds left in 2K. And I'm like, oh, you gonna see these emotions because I'm gonna talk, you know, talk smack to you, whatever. But it's like when you get into the whole thing of actual emotion and being vulnerable with somebody. I think a lot of times what plays into that is the reaction that we get like with Issa mm-hmm. and Nathan mm-hmm. where it's like this thing of oh they just minimize the way you feel and people do this to everybody but yeah. with men it was like when I was little I remember falling off my bike and then my uncle saying don't look at him don't look at him because if you look at him he gonna cry I'm just saying like I just skinned half the skin off my right. knee like, that's and you see him tell nobody don't look at me because if you look at me I'm gonna cry that is not how pain works like I don't know who who came up with this nonsense, mm-hmm. but it's like I fail, I hurt myself. Somebody come help me with this. Like the little girl fall, they call the ambulance. They need life flight, and everything. Like bro, she just you know scratched herself like a little bit. They, like it's, it's, oh, it, they they going to work for her, but I'm over here oh. about to die. Oh, and it's like he yeah, he yeah, yeah, hey, hey, be hey. tough. Suck it up. Right. No, be a man. Right. Or like, man up. Cause man. I, I remember I used to tell myself a lot of a lot of times like when I get ready to cry I like oh, Nick man up man up so man up mm-hmm. like really and it, like bro I'm, I'm over here like just like hurting 
Right. So like, it's like you hurt and hurt. Yeah, and it's like it's just it's just odd because everybody kind of has their things, their differences. Have a nice show. It's still rolling yeah. now. Everybody, I heard I heard a sound. Okay. So, uh, everybody has their differences when it comes now? to yeah. So everybody has their differences when it comes to dealing with boys and girls. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like a little boy playing with a Barbie. Oh, no, 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 no. Take that away from him. Yeah. As a kid, he just sees that as a toy. He doesn't see that as a man or a woman. Yeah. And a little girl, it's like, you know, it's the same thing. They just like, they we, they don't see things the way we see things, but we kind of imprint on them what we feel is yeah. acceptable and what is not acceptable, right. which I completely understand. You're not wanting your son to play with Barbies or whatever. But the thing is, is that a lot of men growing up aren't allowed to express their emotions and how they feel, right. which I think adversely affects them in long-term growth. So, it's so um, damaging mentally. And even what I feel is the case on top of like these gender norms and these social constructs okay. of what masculinity is, once a male, a man does get to that point where, okay, I'm feeling something in me, but how do I express it? Like, what what is this? Like, uh, I'm feeling kind of weird, but I don't know the language for it. And so, you know how um, I bring up Drake. That's my boo. <laughs> um, but so, you know, when Drake said, got me in my feelings, right? Or um, the other rapper, you got me feeling some type of way. Yeah. Okay, but what are you feeling? You know? So it's like you're starting to acknowledge something within you is not feeling normal, mm -hmm. but then you still don't have the appropriate emotional language to identify what that feeling is at that moment because of men are not supposed to express or showcase their emotions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's so damaging because if you don't know how you feel, how do you know how to handle that? Okay. So now with somebody like Drake who's made his career on being vulnerable, kind of a little, a little transparent. And he gets In the beginning, a lot of you know, a lot of people were like, yeah, Drake is a simp. Drake weak. He right. saw oh, he be trying to do this and now he make all the songs for the women. I remember when people made fun of Ja Rule, when Fit, after 50 came up, it was like, oh, Ja Rule makes songs for the ladies. And I'm just like, as a guy, you would think that you want songs right, for the right. ladies like I don't like I don't particularly if I was rapping I wouldn't want to be the guy that my target yeah. demographic is only men it's but just it I'm a man I, 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 this, is, this is true no, okay. so what I'm gonna think is but I, Ja Rule wasn't you know he, he was not gay and Drake that's I'm bad. under the assumption that Drake is not either who knows he but might like good. both ain't nothing wrong with that if that's your decision and that's your life do that mm -hmm. but my thing is it's just that it's just weird to me that like I've never been dating somebody and I've been like, man, let's go put on some gangster shit. Like, when we wrote song, when we wrote letters back in the day, we wasn't writing a hard so a song, uh, knock your head off or a song, F the mother nigga. Like, nah, a song, my boo, Usher, you and Alicia to, Keys. You to cut that. What? <laughs> what? You said the N word. So, you know, it's, it's, it's weird when we wrote song, when we wrote letters back in the day and we wrote the song that was to our girl or to your man, it was like we wrote. Like R and B song, we ain't write the gangster stuff, so it's like we ain't got to be gangster all the right, time. We ain't got to right. be thugging it all the time. It's okay for us to be able to show love, cause it's like a lot. Of, like it's like not even in the sense of just like being sad or down. It's like dudes who don't like holding hands with their woman, yeah, because they feel oh, like oh, it, 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 look, it look weak, or they don't want to hug mom. and kiss their girl in the public, cause they feel like it look weak. And it's like me, I'm gonna be on mine. Like I'm all over my girl in public. I don't care. I. I went, we went down to the cow house, we got our little certificate, we had a whole wedding, you gonna see this love. That's Amen. that's just the way yeah, it worked for me. Right. But it's a lot of people who can express love in that manner because it's just this, and it's not just men, because it's a lot of women like that too. Yeah. They just, they, they, it's like this thing of like display of affection, just it's like taboo for everybody else. Right. But it's like, it's weird. They can sell sex to us and all these different other avenues mm -hmm. and we're perfectly fine with that. Mm -hmm. But it's like somebody kissing somebody else just turns somebody off. And I'm just like, bro, y'all see this every day. Y'all watch TV, y'all watch movies. And it's like, why is that so weird? And why is it so weird for a guy to hold his woman's hand yeah. or to be hugged up with his girl or to go or want to spend time with his girl? And I feel like all oh, that kind of turns back to the whole thing of like the thing of being macho. Mm -hmm. Like you, you being in a relationship with a woman or and wanting to spend time with your girl, to some dudes, it's like, man, you all want to be up under your girl, bro. You weak. I'm just like, 
well, why is that considered like, what, me? What, what, yeah, what would I want to do? Like, why would I want to be around y'all? Right. And I think in order to counteract that is honestly just normalizing it, right? Mm -hmm. So if a man wants to express himself, instead of reacting the way that Issa did, um, just welcome and open that opportunity for him to talk and for him to explore his feelings. Because like we said, a lot of men don't even have that emotional language to identify what's going on. So the fact that Nathan, going back to the episode, you know, um, he identified, okay, I felt like something was wrong. Something wasn't right in me. He was still, you can tell he was still struggling with what exactly was going on. Because mm -hmm. he didn't exactly say, like, what triggered it, how he was feeling, you know, things like that. And when it came to the point where he was feeling that way, what did he do? He withdrew from people, which is the complete opposite of what we want to see happen. Because okay. if I am experiencing uh, any type of emotion, what you want to do is surround yourself with your support system. Because a lot of times, if I'm withdrawing, if I'm isolating, that looks like depression, right? And that furthers that it furthers the, those depressive thoughts or, you know, those unpleasant feelings that we want to experience. So it kind of does more damage than it does good. And it's interesting because you said something that kind of stuck out to me, mm -hmm. which is he felt a certain type of way and he didn't understand why he felt the way he felt. He wasn't mm -hmm. able to explain why he felt the way he felt, mm -hmm. but he was able to tell her that he felt like he some way in particular. Right. But her response to him was basically like, bro, all I care about is the fact that you ghosted me. Like, I don't really, yeah. you know, all that. Yeah, you had a bad mood, but you ain't let me know nothing. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that they didn't, and I wonder if they'll dive into it next season, I'm but it was like, so. the thing of, is that a lot of women that I saw that were commenting on it, they were like, oh, Nathan a punk. Nathan, Nathan wrong for that. He shouldn't have did this. Like, that's that's weak. That's this, this, and that. And I'm just sitting there like, man, in my, in, in my whole mental health head right. i'm just like he told her he had a problem yeah and like he dismissed it and, and and nothing in the show infers that he did anything wrong mm -hmm. uh you know yeah he disappeared but the thing is he was going through something mentally and i think a lot of times we're not equipped to handle those things and yeah. so a lot of women would have responded in the same way that Issa did mm -hmm. because that's the way that our minds tell us is that somebody just forgot about us. We're 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 what's most important. Mm -hmm. So somebody ghosting on us and leaving us and not saying anything mm -hmm. makes us mad. And so I need you to understand that I'm mad before I even understand anything about right. what's going on with you right. and in your mm -hmm. mental state. You need to understand that I'm mad and that you need to acknowledge that I'm mad first, and then maybe we can dive into what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. So like you said, it's important for them to understand how to be able to speak with someone right. and taking that information because he could have been basically that was like a cry to me that was a it cry was, for help absolutely and that's the thing it was a cry for help and i'm so happy that nathan felt comfortable or felt vulnerable enough to even begin to express that so um i want to say in addition to for men, in addition to learning to become more vulnerable, I think one of the things, one of the first things is learning how to um, become more aware, become more in tune with your body. Okay. Because a lot of times our body is going to tell us when something is off, True. right? It's kind of like when I'm feeling a cold, I'll have a sore throat. That's an indication, okay, something is wrong. Maybe I need to go see a doctor. So that's the same thing with our mental health. Our mm -hmm. body is going to tell us maybe I might start experiencing headaches or, um, you know, something in me won't feel normal. So that's my body telling me, okay, hey, something is going on. You need to be in tune. You need to check on that. Okay. And if it's more so mental health related, just like you go see a doctor for your physical medical health, go see a therapist. It's the same exact thing. And we have to normalize mental health and normalize therapy in the same way that we do with going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, so becoming I, more aware of your your body. Yeah, right? we're more so, yeah. we're more prone to like try to deal with it ourselves or try to self medicate. Right. And you know, and while, you know, so WebMD, while it's a great thing, it's probably one of the worst things they ever put on the internet because it's like <laughs> yeah. I found that I had cancer seven times through right. WebMD. Right. You know, so that's probably a record out here. <laughs> and every time, no matter what you type in, cancer is going to be on that list. Mm -hmm. And it's a thing of where we have to get away from the, that. It, to me, therapy needs to be kind of taken in like how religion is. How people say, don't lean on your own understanding. Yeah. 
lean on God's word. So yeah. it's the same thing. Don't lean on your understanding, your own understanding. Go to a therapist. Find yes, out please. what's triggering you. Please. Find out what's going on in your head. Find out why you feel the way you feel. Find out why when you see the sky and it's you know it's about the rain, it upsets you. It, you can, you right. you will okay. never know and understand until you dive deeper into understanding yourself. Right. Sometimes, times, 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 sometimes you need help to understand yourself. Absolutely. Because there's so many things. I'm 34 years old and you're trying to unpack 34 years of things that you've never unpacked before by yourself. Mm -hmm. It'll drive you crazy. So sometimes being able to sit down with somebody who actually went to school for this mm -hmm. and understands how to talk to you and get you to pull some things out of yourself that you may not understand. Yeah. This is Michael Jordan needed Phil Jackson. Kobe Bryant needed Phil Jackson. LeBron needed Tyron Lou. And yeah. they, we all need somebody that can help pull out our greatness and pull out what's inside of us to make us understand what we are capable of and why we react and what our strengths and weaknesses are so okay. that we can work in, on making those things better right and i think that will help because um through research what we understand is that men have the highest rates of completed suicide so that's a clear indication that men do express emotions men do men do go through things but they have a hard time understanding what is happening understanding what their triggers are and understanding how to intervene at that point so then like you said sometimes they might self-medicate mm -hmm. they might turn to suicide they might withdraw or isolate like nathan did so let's just open up that dialogue that men can be vulnerable that masculinity and vulnerability can be within the same sentence it's okay and just you know being open and being open to the idea um you know of a man sharing his feelings yeah because men have feelings have too we feel things kiki i understand you know does he love you does drake love me yeah, yeah. Drake, i'm from asia by the way <laughs> <laughs> so look, man, this is the end of mine, episode three. Yeah. Man, we're getting up there. Yeah. We're on our way to 100. But uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Yeah. Let us know what y'all think in the comments. You know, share with us if you want to. Yeah. How, you know, if you've struggled with some of those things. And, you know, let us know. We'll be sure to respond back to you, talk with you. Right. We just want to get this open dialogue going and let people know that uh, men have feelings too. Yeah. Everybody goes through things. It's okay to talk about those things with a professional because you can't tell everybody your business but you know seek out a professional there's there's various things um and avenues that you can use to reach out to people right. you know you can reach out to engineers you, you can and you have talk space you have all these various things that's out there that right. if you you know you need to speak with somebody sit down and talk to somebody that you can and we appreciate y'all for tuning in showing us love and the support yes. this is the end of mind episode three toodles peace and love looking for oh Hey! <laughs> <laughs>